Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about us and our services, please visit our website at www.wsk9co.com. We're going to be talking about the Zoomies, and, um, and I think it's a pretty common word, um, but we're each going to kind of define what Zoomies are to you. Shannon, what, what would you define Zoomies as? Uh, crazy running, uncontrollable running around with added bad behavior that's never allowed in your house. Like running across the counter, running across the sofa, running across people that are sitting <laughs> on the chair. So yeah, uh, uncontrollable running with bad behavior added. Michelle? Interesting, because I would say that not all Zoomies have bad behaviors to them. Um, I know Joe's going to kill me for saying this, but <laughs> I'm one of those people, I think that when Rambo gets the Zoomies, it's the cutest thing in the whole world. <laughs> uh, but Zoomies in our house, he's really the only one that does it. Every once in a while, Prudence will get really hyper, but I would never call her the Zoomies. Hers are definitely <laughs> more controlled. But Rambo will, will uh, if he's really, really overly excited, he will run up the stairs and do a circle on the bed and then run, and then he'll jump in your arms. It's so cute. <laughs> Melissa, what would you define Zoomies as? Zoomies would be if, you know, the song da -da 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 was an yeah. action. That yeah. is the Zoomies. Um, but just that frantic running around, nothing's, nothing else matters. You could light off fireworks and it's okay, but that one zone running as fast as you can, mm -hmm. jumping on as much as you can, grabbing as much as you can, mm -hmm. and just... Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Um, I had, I brought it up, uh, we've got some friends that have some corgis, they've got three of them, and they're, um, they're pretty cool corgis, actually, um, and they had never heard the, um, term zoomies, and so they were describing, um, what they call frapping, and, and I said, frapping, what does that stand for? And he says, it's frantically, um, running around and playing. And, and I thought, you know, it's a good definition because it's, it's bad and it's good. Um, you should not encourage it. Not all dogs have it in them. Um, but it should, in my opinion, be somewhat controlled. And, I, and this is from um, several situations that have happened with the Zoomies, is they do, in a sense, go into this crazed, lose-their-mind zone and um, they're, when they get to that stage and they're not in an okay situation, um, I had a client where her um, whippets would get the zoomies and she would take them out into, the, into this park and there happened to be a stake up and um, the dogs in this zoomie stage and hit that stake and ripped their guts out. I mean, literally just ripped them open. Um, and the dog, I mean, it didn't kill him at that point, but continued to zoom as they're trying to catch it. And, and because they get in that frame of mind, that's not okay. And so that's like extreme, right? But you take a race dog and put it, zoomies on top of it, he, that dog didn't feel it until it stopped and then dropped. But they, I mean, it was terrible. Um, I've seen many times at the dog parks and, you know, up hiking where the dogs are getting the zoomies and they break their legs and they tear things and their eyes get poked and because they're not in the right frame of mind. So it's, it is something that I don't... Water can tend to create zoomies in dogs, um, playing in the rivers and, and stuff like that. And you'll see all the time people give their dogs a bath and they get the zoomies around the house after they get out of the bath. And so um, it's something that's normal, it's natural, but it, it, you have to know that the dogs get in a crazed state and that it's not always safe and that that's when they hurt themselves. That's when they tear things, that's when things can go bad. And so I think that um, dogs that do get the zoomies, you should be able to control it and call off. 
um, at any point. And that was one thing that we really worked on with our Italian Greyhound because he would get the zoomies, not just racing, but he would get the zoomies, but we could call him and stop him at any point. And so I think that that's really important with, it's, it's not something that you can stop from happening, but you need to be able to control the situation that it's happening in. Um, Michelle, what, what are some of the things that you've seen that create dogs to go into zoomies? I mean, I think the biggest thing is boredom. Uh, we're not exercising them enough. Mm -hmm. um, even with Rambo, it does not happen very often. And I think that's why I think it's so cute because yeah. it really doesn't. And it's like when he's so excited to see us. <laughs> um, his are very controlled. It's actually, yeah. and it, they last literally maybe 30 seconds at the very, very most. He's yeah. old at this point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's probably your biggest indicator that your dog is, is not getting what it needs. It needs something else, even if it's just mental. It needs something else to release. Yeah. Because that's what it's doing, right? It's yep. releasing whatever is pent up in it. Yep. Um. Yeah. And I, I would say, like, for Mitt, um, you know, on long road trips, when we would let him out, like, that's when it would be like, whoa. Yeah. And so out. for yeah. Greyhound, like, their, their release is to run. Yeah. Yeah. And so there just needs to be an appropriate place for him to do right. that. So he doesn't have to get to that crazed point. Yep. Yep. For sure. Exactly. Um, when, when they do it, should people give more physical activity or do you think that it should be more mental at that point? Like if you're, if it's gets to a stage of not being okay or not being healthy. I guess I really, I would think that depends on the dog. Like with Mitt, I would mm -hmm. think it would be a physical thing because yeah. he is an Italian a greyhound. So that it, it definitely, he was bred to run. Right. So he needed more than just mental stuff. He needed to get out and let loose. Um, I think with Rambo, it really is honestly just he's so Joy. bored and then he's so excited. You're home. He, I, I think for him, he's just happy that you picked him up and now he's fine. Like it yeah. really is like he just got that release that you're there. Yeah. He's just so joyful that you're there that like that he now he just wants to go lay on the couch yeah. with you. Yeah. So he, I really think it just depends on the dog. My other two dogs don't ever get to that point. Murphy's for Ada, like for as much con uncontrollable he has of his body, like he has no control over yeah. any of his limbs. He's a very mannered, controlled dog. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So he never gets to that point. Yeah. And if he did, I would definitely think it would be a mental thing. Yeah. That he would need his brain to be working. Um, prudence would probably be more of a physical thing. Right, right. Melissa, have you experienced it? With Cooper, not so much. Mm -hmm. She gets controlled. It means like she'll go out and just kind of run a couple of laps and she knows like if she's inside she'll kind of oh okay she'll go out do three laps and then come back in mm -hmm. um but hers would be mental if it got to that mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. um a family member's dog gets the zoomies and it's dangerous because she will hit the back of your knees mm -hmm. she will mm -hmm. as she's running will jump up on you yeah and it's it's scary like you don't she has no control right she's bigger than she thinks she is and so she'll just slam into you and you'll fall over yeah for her, it's mental. Mm -hmm. She needs to get reconnected and to get grounded. Yeah. And yeah. to just all bring it back. Right. As a release. Right. Um, Shannon, what, what's your take on all of it? Uh, Clooney used to get the zoomies after the bath. And I'm sure that, that he, didn't, he did not like having a bath. And you expect your dog to be really good for a really long time when you have a bath. And he was a Wheaton Terrier, and so it wasn't just like an easy little bath. You know, I, I also had to shave him and everything, too. And so it, that's a long time period of time to expect your dog to be good. And holding that energy of, I don't like this, I don't want to do this. And then when you let them out, they're, then they're like, I'm free from the bath, you know. And so if you have a dog that's getting it because of um, holding in their energy or um, holding in their stress, then you have to find, to control it, you have to find ways to minimize the stress or cut the stress into smaller chunks so that they don't get as hyped up. It's like twisting a rubber band and then letting the rubber band go. So you have to figure out how to, re how to not twist up their rubber band as much for them. Um, Louie gets the zoomies at night, and I think it's just because he's so, such a couch potato. He's the most couch potato dog ever in the history of the universe. And so then he's used no energy all the whole day. And then everyone comes home from work and he's like, yes, energy, you know? So he would get him as a tiny baby. And I don't, I hate it when dogs have zoomies and they'll like run across the sofa and run all over your house and knock over the lamp. And, and so I didn't want that. 
So I turned it into a game for him. So when we come home from work, we play a Zoomy game where he can run away from you uh, like his crazy Zoom, yeah. and then you call him back, and then he can run away again, and then you call him back. And so we play this game where he runs away and comes back and runs away and comes back to get rid of his Zoom outside. Yeah. So um, if you have a, a dog that's using it to release their energy, you can turn it into a game yeah. maybe so that that's how you keep the control, right? You were saying you need to be in control. Well, the control is that no matter like he can only go away so far and then he has to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rambo and Prudence both do get the zoomies after a bath, but I've uh -huh. never really even thought about it being the zoomies. I just figured they really don't want to smell like perfume and they really, <laughs> really want their <laughs> smell back on them, on yeah. our smell. Yeah. So we always, always do bath day on the day that I'm going to wash my sheets. Uh -huh. So we do a bath and then they get shut in our bedroom while they're drying off for like a half an hour so they can just rub all <laughs> over the bed so and get it all out and they can yeah. stink like us again. Yep. And then we wash the sheets. Yeah. But it's safe. I always make sure that they are in a safe because they do get really crazy right. after the bath. So right. yeah. they're just shut into the bedroom where they can stink it up again. Yeah. Yeah. Mitt, bath time was is another release for him, too. Um, so it's not it's not a bad thing, but it definitely is something that you sh need to be able to control because environments can get them in a real bad way. And that's probably, you know, other than cars, that's probably the next hardcore thing that I have ever seen dogs get so brutally hurt from. Um, and so I would say, you know, home time zoomies, as long as they're not being destructive in the house and that you've got some control over what's happening. I mean, because, you know, I mean, a 45 pound pit bull zooming around the house can do some pretty big damage around the house. Um, but, you know, being outside and there's everything safe and they can zoom outside and, and, you know, that's, that's fine. If, as long as you're making sure that all of the other needs are met. But what are some things, Michelle, that people, you know, I see quite a bit when um, hiking that, you know, and, and specifically Tanner Park because there's the watering holes and um, and then dogs go into the zoomies with that. Um, and I just cringe because they're zipping through the broken down logs and everything else. And it's been a really long time since I've been there. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but you remember, like you uh, always no, see that. I think the hardest part for me is not necessarily the environment; it's the other dogs because it makes the other dogs frantic. Right. And then we're going to have this like pile on pack situation, and we're it's not going to end well. Yeah. That dog just became the prey. prey. Yeah. Like, and for a dog like Murphy, it, it doesn't matter. He does not care if he knows your dog. He doesn't care if your dog is nice. He's coming after you, right. and, and he's not really aggressive about it. But who's to say that? Yeah. Once they get get there, that right. was, yeah. And once you get all of them in on it, right. oh, every time. It used to happen when I worked at a day camp, too, it would happen. And it was, it, the zoomies in day camp are the worst thing that yeah. can happen to you in your life. Yep. You're just like, how do I stop the <laughs> chaos? Because right. now everybody in this room is frantic and somebody is going to get hurt or I'm going to get hurt. Yeah. When yep. they all throw me to the ground, yep. like Shannon said earlier. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is... It's pretty serious. I mean, with Mitt, when he would get the zoomies and we had the shepherds um, all together and he would get the zoomies, we had to definitely control it because the shepherds would get frustrated because they can't catch him. But the shepherds could outsmart him because he's in a crazed zone. And so they would like turn the corner, change directions, and Mitt's still going in the same direction. And, and so, you know, that fear is, it's not that they are aggressive, but they're so frustrated by the time that if they caught him, he would probably get hurt. <laughs> so, you know, it's definitely what I see, you know, down at uh, Tanner Park where there's that zoomy, um, that one that's zooming and everybody gets into the chase and you hear these, <laughs> and this frantic thing that happens um, that we as owners need to be accountable for that with the zoomies. Melissa? I was, um, over the summer, I was running up Mill Creek mm -hmm. and it was this, Sunday morning is quite early, but there were quite a few people there, and I was running, and I heard screaming behind me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I stopped, and I'm like, what's going on? Like, yeah. this is weird. And this big lab just comes barreling down the trail, and it it was barreling in all mm -hmm. sense of the word. Um, a mountain biker had to jump off the trail. The dog barreled into his bike, kept mm -hmm. running. Um, and I knew, because I was coming, I was returning back from my run, that there was a rattlesnake mm -hmm. that was hanging out on this rock. Mm -hmm. And the dog ran by it, This, like the rattlesnake. I heard him rattling. Mm -hmm. and I was like, this dog's going to get bit. By a miracle, the dog ran right over the snake. Didn't get bit, yeah. luckily. But he was not in a zone that he <coughs> ran over a bike. Mm -hmm. He 
and dog's instincts would kind of set an alarm you'd think with the rattlesnake right but he was not in a healthy state mm-hmm. um and i had to get off the trail he didn't care and he was jumping up in the bushes and coming down i yeah. thought i'd see this dog i thought he was gonna die yeah because he was up on like shale and it was yeah and the owner was just oh he loves trail hi- he loves hiking this is so much fun right. and was just feeding into this dog's mm-hmm. manis and when i saw him in the parking lot he was foaming at the mouth he was panting he was physically and emotionally in a bad like he was exhausted. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't healthy. Right. Right. Um, what are some things obedience wise that we can do to help um, disconnect when we need to create structure with the zoomies? I mean, I, first you have to get control of your dog. <laughs> so you have to stop that behavior of them being completely out of control. But then I think any basic obedience would be perfect to put in place in that situation yeah let's start doing some downstays sit stays just to get your brain working and focusing on anything else right yeah melissa i think practicing calling off something or emergency recall Mm -hmm. um just because if they're in a situation where it's dangerous our tone's not going to be hey come here this is happy but yeah having our dog recognize Mm -hmm. like this is important stop right now yep but then also calling off of stuff I think combined can kind of help yeah. build into the dog. Like, okay, no matter what state I'm in, I need to kind of maintain at least some connection back. <laughs> right, right, yep. Shannon, what were some of the things with Louie that when you created the game that you made sure that you had so that it was more controlled? The Well, starting small, like I have a teeny yard too. I have a teeny house and a teeny yard. And so then it, if you play, play it in your yard, your yard is safe mm-hmm. um, and you can control the environment, right? Yeah. And then also to a certain extent, your dog kind of has a muscle memory of how far away they can go from you. Mm-hmm. If you always play and you're in the yard and the yard is the same size and the same shape every time. Yeah. <laughs> so then if you, so if you can practice in a space that's the area generally that you want the dog to be to you, mm-hmm. Then when you go and you practice and try to apply it out in the real world, the tendency for for it to be the same spatial orientation usually holds. It depends on the breed of your dog and and how how far away their spatial orientation from you is anyway. Like hunting dogs and bird dogs er, will be like farther away so that the yard might not work. But it worked for a Frenchie. (laughs) So uh, the, so the, the space that he is away from me is the size of my yard. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, for Mitt, we we taught two um, two things um, that were not necessarily like structured obedience. Um, one was just stop, and that stop was not like urge stop because if the shepherds were chasing him, that was not an okay thing. But stop was like a breakup word to like oh, let's do something else. And so it, it's, it was really funny to watch for him that when we said stop, he would go into like sniffing and looking for things and it would throw the shepherds off like, oh, okay, we're not chasing anymore. Like it just stopped, stopped that prey drive. So then when, you know, like they would get up, up to him and he's like sniffing and doing something else, um, it just like de-escalated everything. So um, it kept him safe. And then the other one that we taught him was... Um, we, he had his recall with here, but it was also an up. And so he would jump up into our, our arms, but I wouldn't do that if there were other dogs chasing him because then I'm going to get hit by the other dogs as well. And then potentially them grabbing all of us. So there was, you know, certain situations that we would be, because sometimes he would get to a point that you like nothing. I mean, earlier on there was nothing. And so, Teaching him to up was like kind of part of the zoomies where he would just kind of zoom up and like we could catch him. But that's like a 12 pound dog and a dog that could jump. So, you know, there you get creative with it so you can add the zoomies into this whole picture to make it make sense to them. If your dogs were over my house, I always stopped your shepherds because they were always more in control than he yeah. was. <laughs> so yeah. I always asked them to come to me. Yeah. Uh, they are very toy motivated. So they would just like, if I had a toy in my hand, they'd be like, oh, she has a toy. Mitt's not as exciting right. anymore. Yeah. Um, and then Mitt would calm down because he wasn't being chased anymore. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, that was how I always just, uh, yeah, that's. Yeah. And I think, you know, being out in like a dog park and you have a dog that gets the zoomies, um, 
you can't always call and people don't always have control over their the other dogs and so um it would help like because there were times that we took uh, mitt to the dog park up in montana um because of the dangers of him breaking something in in the woods and so though he would get others chasing him and so for him it was just like you have to stop that <laughs> and so then it you know then he would just be like oh well, okay so um melissa um one thing that we did i was trying to think of how we got Cooper to the point where she didn't go full on zoomies Mm -hmm. because she stops herself and kind of checks like, okay, she kind of gets Mm -hmm. pre-zoomies. But we, when she starts kind of getting like, this is exciting. She mostly, her zoomies are hurting. Yeah. She'll start running out in the yard, hurting anything she can find. Yeah. But we'll ask her where something is. Uh Like, like her toys that she knows the name of will be like, okay, where is, Yeah. she has this toy duck that she's obsessed with. Where's your duck? And she'll stop and, oh, okay, and then kind of have a yep. searching for that thing. But that's how we started. So her zoomies will immediately turn into searching searching mm-hmm. for a toy to bring yeah. to us, yep. which yeah. de-escalates her and brings that connection back to right. us. Right. I would never say Murphy has those zoomies because I just don't think that dog has enough control of himself right. to do that. But he does get extremely excited if he knows he's going somewhere. Uh-huh. Uh, and at that point, we do. We just start basic obedience stuff. He has to go sit, lay down, yeah. whatever, on his bed. And it's still annoying because he's like, Ugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or we'll have him go find a toy or something. But, yeah, it keeps their mind in control. And so I think, you know, from all of this, as we talk about the zoomies, it's it's not, again, it's not a bad thing. It ju- you just need to be able to control it because it is a dangerous thing um, for people. I am and so dogs. grateful Murphy doesn't get the zoomies because I he would hurt himself. Yeah, like, yep. For as controlled of a man or dog he is, I'm I'm terrified every day he's gonna break his hip just coming yep. down the stairs. And it's not because he's doing it in a crazed way. He just that doesn't dog has have the no control. control of yep. himself. Yeah, and that's what happens in the zoomies is they l- literally just like they're in a whole different place. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that controlled zoomies, zoomies in a controlled environment, but you being able to stop that and disrupt that thought, I think, is the most important thing. So speaking of, like, uh, hurting stuff, like, Murphy has stuff when he goes into hurting mode that we make him do. We make him lay down on the ground and crawl, Mm -hmm. stuff like that stuff, just so that we never get into a situation that he just loses his mind. And he gets really excited to see sheep and cows. Like, it's, it's, it's definitely almost to that point. That you're like, oh, I have no control of you. Yep. It's definitely there. He's got the instinct for sure. Uh, but we definitely will, like, change that. And we'll change it in a healthy way that if we ever did want to decide to start hurting yeah. with him, that it's something he'd have to learn anyways. So right. when he was younger, we did a lot of crawling. So we'll make him do it down. And it's it's appropriate him for him to, like, crawl towards the sheep. We're totally fine with that yep. as long as he doesn't get back up. Right. Um, We've never discouraged, like, the whining and barking when it comes to that stuff because mm-hmm. we want him to be excited about it. But we definitely changed that thought process that he can't just go straight into chasing right. until we say it's okay. Yeah. I think that's good. Anything else you guys to add with, with Zoomies? I'm a super fan of the command sit <laughs> because everyone teaches that to their dog. Yeah. And they teach it from the time that they're a tiny, tiny baby. It's the first thing that they learn. And so just as an average person that goes out in the world and finds lost dogs or that's hiking without her dog and finds a dog in trouble on the trail, you wouldn't believe the power the word sit has that that anyone can tell your dog to do that. And they probably will. And so if, you know... You're, for a safety standpoint, if you need to prevent a situation, or your dog or somebody else's, you can try to just say, sit and see if they will. Because surprisingly, a lot of the time, they absolutely 100% do. Yeah. It, or stop them. yeah, yeah. So I was just thinking about that. So if your dog gets the zoomies, let's say in the house where it's safer, uh-huh. I think it would probably be appropriate if you had something that as it as it's starting to slow down to have them do something and Mm -hmm. then each time it gets shorter and shorter because i was thinking about this like brambos is it really is stinking cute it's the cutest thing that ever happens to me and it only happens like once a week and it just like (laughs) fills my heart up with joy when he does it but his his actual like the end thing is him being able to jump up into our arms yeah so it really it really it lasts 30 seconds at the very most but i don't know what would happen if we didn't let him jump into our arms like i don't know if like we just ignored that if he'd keep going i have no idea i don't think he would because he's old at this point but if we when he was younger sure. if I just let it keep going so uh, to to start shortening that process mm-hmm. start making it shorter and shorter each day that you ask your dog just to sit at the end of it once they start slowing down yeah. ask them to sit and then yep. the next day instead of 30 seconds it's gonna be 
25 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's great. And yes, it is pretty powerful. So eventually you could just say sit in the middle of it and they're like, oh, the game is over. Right. Yeah. Which is great. Okay. I think that, um, I think if everybody starts thinking about, you know, how do we train this and what do we train, just wait for the zoomies to start happening and looking for the opportunities to start asking for things. Um, and my recommendation is, is when you're out in public situations from hiking to dog parks and all of that is that you really should not allow zooming to happen. It's just really not a safe situation for your dog. It's not cute in that situation, people. Yeah. It's not. Your dog is in danger on both ends. Yep. The chaser and the chasey. Yep. Exactly. So control it and help them be in a controlled environment to, to do it. Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about us and our services, please visit our website at www.wsk9co.com. And as always, we urge you to get out and train.